Welcome back to Grants Pass High School Local Academic Masters Competition. We're now ready to start the math portion of the competition. The students are competing for the right to represent Grants Pass High School in the County Academic Masters Competition held on Wednesday, March 10th, right here at Grants Pass High School. Competitors will have a maximum of five minutes to present their responses to the questions that have been given to them. All competitors receive the same question, our choice of question. Competitors will be notified when there is one minute remaining for their responses. Each competitor receives the same amount of time to prepare for his or her verbal responses to the question. The final winner is determined by a variable total of the student's score on the written test taken earlier this month and on their performance today. For the competition today is math. Our judges are Jill McKay, Jeremy Knight, and Tyler Chief. Thank you for volunteering your time to do this. I'll do my very best to read the question that the students were given. <clears throat> Here's the question that the students were given. The number of cases per day of COVID-19 in the United States hit a peak on January 8, 2021 at 314,000 cases and has been steadily declining since then. Using some selected data points, we can create a regression model for thousands of confirmed COVID-19 cases as a function of time in days since January 8. Use this exponential function to answer the following questions. Then be prepared to justify your responses and explain the mathematics involved. A, according to this model, on what date will the number of confirmed daily COVID-19 cases reach 60,000 in one day? B, using this model function, compare the average rate of change from January 9th to February 9th to the instantaneous rate of change on February 9th. Interpret these values in context of the pandemic. C, now suppose another reporter at the Grants Pass Daily Courier is writing a different article and needs help writing an opening statement accurately and specifically using the model function from above. According to mathematical models, the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases since January 8th will reach 7 million on, and the students finish that statement. And D, according to this model, will the number of COVID-19 cases in the USA ever reach zero? Explain the implications of this. That was the mathematic question the kids were presented. Our first math competitor is Michael Hendrick. Michael is the son of Anastasia and Robert Hendrick. He is a senior here at Grants Pass High School. Michael is involved in academic masters, jazz band, and wind ensemble. Theater, Dungeons and Dragon Club, and the math team. Michael has plans to attend BYU Idaho and major in music education. Michael says that Mr. Garcia has influenced him the most because band has been a hugely positive experience for me. In his spare time, Michael enjoys playing music, puzzles, and going to game night. His favorite movie is Soul because he thought it was super interesting. Michael couldn't come up with just one favorite high school memory, so he said playing music with his friends, playing Dungeons and Dragons with the game, and the Rubik's Cube races between him and Bryce Boggs were his favorite memories. Fun fact, Michael is the returning math academic master champion, and he placed fourth in the state in the OIMT in the area of Open 1, which is pre-calculus. Please welcome Michael Hendrick. Is that good? <laughs> All right. So the equation here that it starts us off with is C of T is 8 plus 304 e to the negative 0 0.4. Sorry. 
to the negative 0.04t. The important thing to realize here is that this is an exponential equation that marks decay. The number of cases each day is going down, which is a good thing given what this year has been so far. Another important thing here to realize that this is that this is cases in thousands. So the first question here is asking on what day the number of confirmed cases will reach 60,000. So we set 60,000 equal to the number of cases in a day. And after solving that and simplifying it, we can find that the number of days it will be until it reaches 60,000 is 44 days after January 8th, which is going to be on February 21st, 2021, which is coincidentally my birthday, which I found interesting. Now question B is asking us to compare the rate of change, the average rate of change, from January 9th to February 9th to the instantaneous rate of change on February 9th. Well, this one is asking us is, yeah, sorry about that. So over here, I'm solving for the average rate of change on January 9th. I wrote an integral equation to find the total number of cases uh, since January 9th, and then solve that over here to find that from January 9th to February 9th, we have 5,436,916 confirmed COVID cases for an average of 175,000 a day. And when we compare that to the instantaneous rate of change on February 9th, we only have 92,000 a day, which is nice because it means that yet again, it's going down and everyone is relieved to hear cases are going down. Now C here was asking at what point in time we would reach 7 million cases total since January 8th, of course. So over here, I used the equation that I created earlier, the integral equation, and set that equal to 7 million cases. It's 7,000 here just because it's dealing in thousands of cases. And once I solved for that, I found that the number of days would be 51 since January 8th, which ends up being February 28th of 2021. So on February 28th, 2021, we will, we, will, we will have reached 7 million cases since January 8th. Now, according to this model, the number of cases will never reach zero. This model assumes that we're getting at least 8,000 new cases a day, which is shown up here. You have this 8 up here plus the 304e to the negative 0.04t. So while the number of cases we get will always be going down, according to this model, it will never reach zero. Now, the thing to remember here is that this model isn't necessarily 100% accurate. Because as much as looking at this is bleak and you're like, yeah, we'll never reach zero COVID cases, it doesn't always necessarily reflect real life. And it's important to realize the difference between the numbers that we have plotted here and reality. Because as we have more vaccinations being worked on and more precautions being taken, the number of COVID cases each day will continue to go down. And I hope eventually we'll reach zero cases. Once we reach zero, it should be easy enough to keep it there. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We introduce our next math competitor. Just like to remind you that this is being live streamed on YouTube and there will be a recording on YouTube if you'd like to share that with people. We'd also like to remind you that all safety protocol is being followed during this academic master's competition. The only time the kids remove their mask or anybody removes their mask is when they're speaking into a microphone. We have very few people in attendance today. That's why we're live streaming it. 
streaming it, but we just wanted to let you know that we are following all safety protocols. Thank you. Our next math competitor is Peyton Borsma. Peyton is the son of Travis and Jennifer Borsma. He's a senior here at Grants Pass High School. Peyton is involved in the soccer team and is captain of the varsity soccer team. Peyton plans to attend San Diego State University and major in business. Peyton says that Mr. Fry has influenced him the most because he is a genius. I'm sure Mr. Fry would appreciate that, Peyton. In his spare time, Peyton like, enjoys spear fishing. His favorite movie is Hot Rod because it's hilarious. Peyton's favorite high school memory is when the soccer team won the conference title. Please welcome Peyton Borsma. All right. So, this is a math problem. It asks, it's talking about, like, number of daily cases of COVID-19 since, like, January 8th. And it gives me this equation right here. And it tells me that this equation tells me, like, the number of total cases, well, the number of cases gained per day. So, like, as you can see, cases, they're going down, like, a lot. Every day. Which is a good thing. I'm actually kind of curious whether this is, like, accurate or not. Anyways, so the first part of the thing says, according to the model, on what day will the number of confirmed daily COVID-19 cases reach 60,000 in one day? Now, at first, I was like, ah, frick, I don't got the smart calculator. Smart calculator, you can just type in, like, anything. And it's really easy and nice because you can just click the delete this button or the enable button. But then I was like, okay. So I'm actually going to have to take the derivative of this equation. So I took the derivative of the equation. Got a weird number that I didn't really like, which means I took, did it wrong, probably. And then I kind of just went on looking at the graph, plugged in a bunch of numbers, and I found the day that it reached 60,000 cases, and that was February 21st, which is kind of cool. My favorite method of math called guess and check. And then for number B, number B, of course it'll say number B. Using this model function, compare the average rate of change from January 9th to February 9th. And it wanted me to use the instantaneous rate of change on February 9th. Now this time I actually had to take the derivative, so I did. And I think it worked out well this time. And I found the average rate of change to be 6.74 thousand cases per day dropping, which means since January 8th to February 9th, daily, 6.74 thousand cases did not happen. So like, on January 8th, 314 confirmed cases happened. On February 9th, 91 cases happened. In between the... Well, in between January 9th and February 9th, 6.74 thousand cases did not exist per day, which is kind of confusing. But on February 9th, the instantaneous rate of change was 3.38 thousand cases declined, which makes sense because it should be a lot higher since it's not linear. Now... The next part of the equation thing said that the Grants Pass Daily Courier needed some help writing an article and wants to know when it will reach 7 million cases. Now, I, I figured out the derivative, but for integrals, man, it's been a while. And I did not know how to do the integral. So I used the old way of solving things where you do... Uh, the number of cases on day zero plus the number of cases on day one plus the number of cases on day two and so on. But I know it's a curve, so that means there's gonna it's gonna take a couple extra days that you have to add on to it. So my math got me to like February twenty third. So I thought that I, I I actually looked at the curve the wrong way at first. I thought it was gonna end up being like February twenty first ish. Because I was thinking that you had to add on numbers. You actually have to subtract, which means that I got around February 28th, which is what I took. 
And then for the D part, it asked if it ever hit zero. And I said no. It's impossible to hit zero because the graph has a little eight right here. And that eight means there has to be at least 8,000 cases per day. And that's not realistic, but it, this is probably the most accurate graph they could have done since no graph is perfect. So, yeah, that's basically my answer. Boom. Thank you, Peyton. Our next math competitor is Parker Pastrell. Parker is the son of Shea Marsh and Peter Pastrell. He's a junior here at Grants Pass High School. Parker's involved in soccer, National Honor Society, and the math team. Parker plans to attend college and study finance or computer science. Parker says that Mr. Fry has influenced him the most because he knows how to get his students to learn well and have fun. In his spare time, Parker enjoys skiing, mountain biking, and playing soccer. His favorite movie is Sahara because he thought it was funny. Parker's favorite high school memory is going to the mall after a math meet. Please welcome Parker Pastrell. So on the first question, it asks, uh, on what date will the number of cases reach 60,000? So what I did is I set the equation equal to 60 because it's in cases in thousands. And so first off, I subtracted 8 and then divided by 304. And then I was left with... 52 over 304 is equivalent to e to the negative 0.04t. And then I took the natural log of both sides here to be e. And then divided that both sides by negative 0.04. Now I was left with a p-value of 44.1446. So uh, with that, I figured out that after 44 days, uh, after January 8th, would be February 21st, but this value was too, too high to have reached 60,000. So uh, I predict that the number of cases will reach 60,000 per day on February 22nd. Uh, the second question asks, what is the average rate of change from January 9th to February 9th? And the way I solved this was using the slope the, uh, equation, and so I found the values for one day after January 9th and uh, February 9th. So I plugged in my y values and x values and got a slope of negative 6.745. Uh, and then, so interpret this each day, the number of cases dropped by about 6.745 thousand each day between January 9th and February 9th. Now the, but the, now the instantaneous uh, rate of change for February 9th, I checked it by finding the derivative of the equation. And I was left, and the derivative, I got 304e to the negative 0.04t times negative 0.04. And I got negative 3.38. Now this was less, or not as steep of a slope as um, January 9th to February 9th, but on February 9th, the instantaneous rate of change was negative 3.38, so the number of cases was decreasing by 3.38 thousand a day on that date. So, no, so the next one asks, when 
will the number of cases reach 7 million after or since January 8th. And for this, I used the, uh, the, in the integral of the function and found that on February 8th that the cases would reach and exceed 7 million. Uh, and February 27th um, proved this because on February 27th they did not reach 7 million. They were just under about 230,000 less. So the number, so at some time on February 28th, the cases will reach 7 million. Uh, and the last one asks if the number of cases will ever reach zero in the United States. Uh, so what I did was I took the limit of the equation as time or number of days since or after January 8th, those to infinity. And as I as and when you plug in infinity for t, you get a very small value or exponent above the e. So as that gets so as t gets infinitely large, the exponent gets infinitely small. So the exponent is going to eliminate zero. So and then so e to the zero is one. And then you get plug that in, you get eight plus 304 times 1 is 312. So this uh, shows that uh, the number of cases in the US will not reach zero. And this means that people will continue to get the COVID, vi the COVID virus and will test positive. So we will need to be cautious of it. And like other viruses, employees uh, be aware that they will occur. Thank you, Parker. Our final math contestant is Alex Guyman. Alex is the son of Matt and Sarah Guyman. He's a junior here at Grants Pass. Alex is involved in track and field and the math team. Alex plans to attend Hillsdale College and major in political economy and then attend the Mises Institute and earn his master's in Austrian economics. Alex says that Mr. Lingo has influenced him the most because he encouraged me to go far in mathematics and got me an extra year ahead. In his spare time, Alex enjoys reading books and treats a Zeus. His favorite movie is Tenant because it is fast paced, intellectually stimulating, and suspenseful. suspenseful. Please welcome Alex Guyman. All right, so to begin, it asks um, when the cases will reach 60,000 a day. So. Um, I had to make some last-minute changes when I had about a minute left, so some of the notation is incorrect. But essentially what we're solving, since it's in thousands, we want to solve on C of t equals 60, and then just solve for t. You use the natural logarithm to get it out of the, the exponent, and solve for t, and you get t equals 44, and 44 days from January 8th is February 21st. And there is some, a decimal tagged onto 44, but since we want not the exact minute, we want the day, and we can just round that. Um, as for B, we want the average rate from January 9th to February 9th compared with the instantaneous rate. So the day average rate is just the standard uh, delta C of T over delta T. We can solve that and we get negative 6.695. And then to get the instantaneous rate, we of course need to use the derivative. Um, so we take the derivative of C and solve that at 32, which is the time uh, that February 9th is. And we get negative 3.381. Um, so in this context, Essentially what that means is the rate in which the cases are decreasing, since they're negative number per day, uh, is faster over the average. That is, the average rate that the cases are decreasing is faster than the average rate is, or instantaneous rate is decreasing on February 9th itself. Um, so that 
like medically speaking, well, we can attribute that to either vaccinations or herd immunity because exponentially speaking, as more people either get the disease or the vaccination, then fewer, people, fewer and fewer people will be susceptible to it. Um, so the decreasing will, uh, the rate in which it decreases will also decrease. Um, uh, to paraphrase uh, Oscar Wilde, whenever someone has something unpleasant to say, they should always be perfectly candid. Uh, to be perfectly candid, I didn't really finish number C, or letter C, I should say. Um, I ran out of time right when I thought I had a breakthrough. Um, but anyway, so um, because we're aggregating it, we want the aggregate of 7 million, we would do the integral. So we set that up, and instead of solving for the integration itself, we're solving for one of the parameters, um, the, upper, the upper bound, I guess you could say. But then I, I didn't actually finish that one, unfortunately. Um, and then D... Uh, will they ever reach zero? No. Uh, it's an exponential function, so it'll asymptotically approach zero. Got the word. Uh, but it'll never actually reach zero. And what this means is whether in our individual lives or through the power of government or whatever, reaching zero cases per day is not a feasible goal because according to this model, it's actually physically impossible. Um, that doesn't mean we should strive to get rid of uh, as much disease as possible, but according to the model, reaching zero exactly is not a, a likely outcome. Thank you. To Alex. Now, if we could get all four competitors back up on the stage, we'll get a picture. So, if we could have Michael, Peyton, Parker, and Alex kind of come right here to the center of the stage. Mrs. Napier will get your picture. After that, we're going to take a little break and let our judges collaborate. And there'll be Mrs. Napier, do you know how much time we'll have before music? And we'll start the music portion academic masters at three o'clock. <laughs> Congratulations, all four of you. Well done. Well done. Thank you, judges. Thanks again for your helping helping out with our academic masters.